Hello, this is Josh Patel, and today we're going to be doing chapter 12, which is the history of life. We're only going to be doing part 1, though. So, let's start at 12.1, the fossil record. So, our key concept is, specific environmental conditions are necessary in order for fossils to form. Fossils can form in several ways. The first is permineralization, and this occurs when minerals carried by water are deposited around a hard structure. So as we know, fossils are basically the main thing scientists use to discover the past, and they're just imprints that were made by animals or plants long, long ago. A natural cast forms when flowing water removes all the original tissue, leaving an impression. We don't really have to know the specific ways fossils are formed, but we're just going to go over them anyway. So this is a cast. And then there's trace fossils, and they record the activity of an organism. So, basically footprints. It shows that they were active in walking. There's amber-preserved fossils, and there are organisms that become trapped in the tree resin that harden after the tree is burned, and you get basically like an animal stuck in a gel-looking thing. Preserved remains form when an entire organism becomes encased in a material such as ice. So ice, as we know, preserves things really well. And that's why we put things in the refrigerator. So to get this, it's basically like putting a human in or, or whichever this creature was in a refrigerator, aka ice. Specific conditions are needed for fossilization, and only a tiny percent of living things become a fossil. So not every dinosaur become a fossil, became a fossil, only some have. Radiometric dating provides an accurate way to estimate the age of fossils. So radiometric dating is basically using elements to radioact and their radioactive decay, their half-lives, to estimate how old a fossil is. So relative dating estimates the time during which an organism lives. And relative dating is just basing it off another thing that they already know the date of. So it, it compares the placement of fossils and layers of rocks. Scientists infer the order in which species existed. So they basically take fossils from a top, they would say, if they found a fossil at the top layer and they found one at the bottom layer, they would say, well, the fossil at the bottom layer was found lower than the Earth's crust, Therefore, it must, it must be older, and that's basically what they do in relative dating. Then we have radiometric dating, which uses decaying of unstable isotopes. Isotopes are atoms of an element that differ in the number of neutrons. So this carbon has six neutrons, while this one has eight neutrons. And they usually use carbon. It's usually called carbon dating. A half-life is the amount of time it takes for half the isotope to decay. So we have 100, here we have 50, and so the time it takes to get to 50 would be the half-life. And then it, they just keep doing it, so 50 to 25, 25 to 12.5, and so on and so on. So 12.2, the geologic time scale. The geologic time scale divides Earth's history based on major past events. Index fossils are another tool to determine the age of, a ro of rock layers. Index fossils are just fossils that are used to relate things. So if they find a fossil in a certain layer, they'll date that fossil and they say this layer must be this years old because it's either right on top of the fossil or right below the fossil. Index fossils can provide the relative age of a rock layer, exist only during specific spans of time, occur in large geographic areas. Index fossils include fusulins and trilobites. We don't need to know that. So the geologic time scale organizes Earth's history. The history of Earth is represented in geologic time scales. So it's basically a timeline for Earth's history. Eras last ten to hundred ten to hundreds of millions of years. Consist of two or more periods. And there are three areas, so Cenozoic, Mesozoic, and Paleozoic. I don't think you guys will be asked much detail about them, but just know the names and the orders of them. So first we have Cenozoic. It's the newest, so what we're living in now. 
Then we have Mesozoic, which is a little older. Then we have Paleozoic, which is the oldest of the old. Periods last tens of millions of years, most commonly used unit of time on a time scale. Associated with rock systems. So now the periods are related to how the, they dated the rocks, so or how the earth layers came into play. Each lasts sev several million years. So the earth's been along for been around for a long time. So now 12.3 origin of life. The key concept, the original the origin of life on earth remains a puzzle, so we don't really know exactly how life started. We just have a bunch of theories. Earth was very different billions of years ago. There have been many hypotheses for Earth's origin. The most widely accepted hypothesis for Earth's origin is the, neb the nebula hypothesis. So several sets of hypotheses propose how life began on Earth. There are two organic mole molecule hypotheses. First is the Miller-Urey experiment, and this is the one we need to know most about. And so they say that the bacteria in the ocean a long, long time ago were, had, like, they became lively due to the atmosphere and the thunderstorm that was going on at the time. And then it started life that way. So they've done many tests by using the same substances that were in the ocean a long, long time ago. And they used some in elect electrodes to produce an electric current to simulate lightning, and they do get these micromolecules that form. So that's another credible reason. And then there's the meteorite hypothesis. There are different hypotheses for early cell structure as well. There's iron sulfide bubble hypothesis, and then the lipid membrane hypothesis. We don't need to know in depth about any of these. A hypothesis proposed that RNA was the first genetic material. So some people think RNA was before DNA. So ribosomes are RNA molecules that catalyze their own replication, but DNA needs enzymes to replicate. So as we know, DNA needs enzymes to split itself up and create two copies, but RNA does not. So RNA can duplicate by itself, but DNA needs enzymes to duplicate. So that's it for what we're gonna do now. We'll finish the end of chapter 12 later so make sure you watch that video.